Finally, the dragon has been slayed. Whoop that trick. Trick Williams was the man to take down Eli Dragunov and be crowned the brand new NXT champion. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your spring breaking review. This is going to be a positive review, not because the show was necessarily great, but because we've got a new champion about time. I'm absolutely sick of these long-ass title reigns in WWE. Now, I think there should have been two new champions tonight. We'll talk a little bit more about Tatum Paxley. But you knew Tatum Paxley was never going to win because WWE now, under the Triple H era and in recent years, to be honest, probably like the last, I don't know, two, three, four, five years, they just do long title reigns with their main titles. You, you look at their world titles and like the Intercontinental and US title, they always do long title reigns. And there seems to be this sort of belief that somebody having a long title reign makes them great. Like WWE are trying to feed us this lie that Roman Reigns is the best of all time because he's held the title for four years. And then you even get fans trying to back that up. It's like, fuck no. Fuck no. Roman Reigns... We, like, until Roman Reigns joined the bloodline, people didn't like the guy, people hated him, his career sucked, right? The, the fact is, Roman Reigns has had more years of shit during his career than good years. That is a fact. Now, some people will obviously just jump on the Roman Reigns bandwagon because he's in the bloodline. I don't care for that. Somebody having a long title reign doesn't make the title reign good. The reign needs to be good. The person holding the belt needs to be good. Are you trying to tell me that, like, Gunther's Intercontinental Championship reign was better than, like, an RVD who maybe only had the belt for maybe three months but put on great matches, interesting feuds. You look at Austin back in the day, are you telling me that Roman Reigns is a better world champion than him despite Austin winning the belt against all the odds, overcoming the boss? Austin might not have had a, a, a two-year, like a three-year title reign, but maybe... Austin only had like a four month title reign, a five month title reign, but it was a great title reign. It was Stone Cold Steve fucking Austin. The guy was over. All right. Just because somebody has a belt that they never actually won, that they don't determine the real outcome of the matches. Just because you can hold a belt for four years doesn't mean you're great. It means WWE have picked you to be the champion. All right. That, that's a fact. So I'm sick of this misbelief that if a title reign is long, it's automatically good. No, most title reigns in WWE are boring as fuck. Now, I actually like the Roman Reigns title reign, but I do think it went on way too long. Gunther one, way too long. Even the EO Sky one, way too long. It was boring. Rhea Ripley held it over a year. How many credible opponents, how many credible challengers did she face in that time? Probably two or three. The other matches, you just knew she would win. And that's what sucks about wrestling. And that's what sucks about title matches. You know, you know for a fact, when somebody wins the belt, they don't have a chance of losing it for at least a few months. At least a few months. Look at the two new world champions, Damien Priest, Cody Rhodes. I guarantee you that they both leave Backlash with the title. There's no interest. There's no reason to care. Is GSO going to beat Damien Priest? Is AJ Styles going to beat Cody Rhodes? No. The answer is not because title reigns are boring as fuck WWE believe that if you have the title for a long time that makes you great I'm sorry it doesn't okay it just it clearly doesn't but whatever I mean look at some of the biggest stars of all time didn't even have that long of title reigns I'm thinking The Rock Austin Taker none of these guys Shawn Michael none of these guys really had overly long title reigns so yeah I mean holding the belt for a long time it, it doesn't mean shit really I mean, if you can have a four-year title reign that's great, then that's fantastic. But if you've got a, a four-year title reign that for the last two years has been boring, people have been wanting you to lose the belt, that kind of sucks. And then, like, Roman Reigns' long title reign takes away from the fact that Gunther and also vice versa. So Gunther's had a two-year title reign. And then that, that like, begins to take away from Roman Reigns. Then you've got Rhea Ripley held the belt for a year. But then you're thinking, well, that's not that impressive. Because Gunther's had it two years. Reigns has had it four years. So, I mean, I could understand if they really wanted to do a long title reign. But I think considering that they did a four-year title reign with Roman Reigns, the other title reigns should have been short. There's no way Gunther and Rhea Ripley should have held the belts for over a year. 
Eels guy were talking about seven or eight months. Seth Rollins were talking about nine, ten months. It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Anyway, enough about title reigns. Let's talk about the first title match. Uh, Roxanne Perez, Lyra Falkyria, Tatum Paxley. I would have gave it to Tatum Paxley. I would have. For me, well, let, let's break it down. Tatum Paxley, hot as fuck. Um, not that I'm saying Roxanne Perez isn't hot, and I'm not saying Ly Lyra Falkyria isn't hot, but you've got Tatum Paxley doing this like weird kind of goth, emo, dark shit, and it's, it's hot, okay? She is hot. She's done a big 450 splash off the top rope. She's cut... I tell you this, Tatum Paxley in the past couple of weeks has cut better promos than Roxanne Perez or Lyra Falkyria have ever cut. So for that reason alone, I would have done something fresh. I would have put the title on Tatum Paxley, but no, they have Roxanne Perez win. Look, I don't think the finish of the match is bad at all. It's actually pretty good. You've got pa uh, Paxley with the 450 splash. You have... Uh, her rolling up wider Falkyria, and then you've got Roxanne Perez coming through with a sunset flip on uh, Paxley. No one looked bad here, I don't think. Anyway, but it is what it is. I, I would have had Tatum Paxley, but good match, look, good match, and I would have had Tatum Paxley win, but it is what it is. Uh, we will see. Roxanne Perez being a heel and being about four foot tall, I don't know if I buy that or not, but, you know, Whatever. Uh, we have Adam Pearce and Nick Aldas discussing the upcoming WWE draft. Ava promises that NXT will never be the same following tonight's show. Alright, what's going to happen? I mean, it will never be the same. That's a pretty big promise. I mean, what can really happen for it to never be the same? Uh, we get Henley pushing Jada. This leads to a match. Big wow. Uh, we get two guys making their debut next week. Um... Big wow. We get Fick Joseph plugging the NXT Battleground premium live event. Um, okay. Uh, it's partly it's going to take place at the UFC Apex on June 9th. So I don't know. Does this mean that they're sharing an arena? Are they sharing a location with the UFC? I don't know if I picked that up wrong. If I did, somebody explain it to me. Uh, I think it would be cool though to see WWE and UFC host a joint event, but at the end of the day, I mean, they're two separate different things. UFC is a legit competition. Now, some people don't like this. Some people say, why are you calling wrestling fake? It's not a dig at wrestling. I fucking love wrestling. I wouldn't be having, I wouldn't have a channel on YouTube. I wouldn't dedicate all these hours every week watching wrestling if I didn't. Just because I don't like current day wrestling doesn't mean I'm not a fan of wrestling. But to say it's fake, I'm not, of course we're not saying... Or injuries don't happen or, or shit doesn't happen. But at the end of the day, it's not an actual, real, legitimate fight. That's what we mean by fake. Whereas UFC is, okay? Yes, WWE is sports entertainment. Yes, you need to be athletic. You can argue that being a wrestler is harder than being an MMA guy or a boxing guy. Absolutely, you can argue that. But in boxing, in MMA, cage fighting, kickboxing, whatever, you have two guys legitimately trying to beat the other one and trying to hurt him to do so. In wrestling, you do not have that, okay? You have two guys basically working with each other to try and put on a match that looks good, to try and keep each other safe. It's just, it's basically a physical dance at the end of the day, okay? So that's what we mean by fake. We're not downplaying wrestling. We're not criticising wrestling or, or trying to diminish wrestling we're not doing that we're simply just saying it's not a legit competitive fight so i don't know why that bothers people therefore i understand if they don't mix wwe and usc together but i think it would be pretty cool so it is what it is second match we get the the family defeating at no catch quarter in a six-man tag right okay um the commentary team fick joseph he kind of marked out that d'angelo defeated the the champion here like who cares who cares if d'angelo beat the Heritage Cup champion. This guy was just fighting for the world title on NXT, or the NXT Championship, sorry, at Stand and Deliver, and now we're supposed to care because he picked up a pinfall over some fucking bum? I mean, come on, I don't care about this. I don't care about this. Uh, third match, Fallon Henley versus Jada Parker. Jada Parker got the win. A uh, bit surprised here, but whatever. And we got a JC Jane promo. Talking about Fia Hale, she's going to take her on during spring break in week two. We then got Natalia and Lola Face contract signing. Ava was out there. Um, is what it is. Lola get asked by Natalia who you're going to have in your corner. Out comes Shayna Baszler. 
Shayna Baszler got a pretty big pop. I don't know why, but they love her in NXT. And then we got a brawl, and it's like, holy fuck, you've got Natalia, Shayna Baszler. It's just, do we really care about this? You've got Lola Face, who just doesn't really look natural either. I mean, this Carmen chick definitely looks hot. The one thing, I think she's from like Czech Republic or Russia or something like that, or Slovakia. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I just don't really care for any of these women. Come on, it's NXT. It's the next generation. We're creating the stars of tomorrow. Yet we've got two 40-plus-year-old women here in Natalia and Shayna Baszler. Like, why? I don't get it. Why? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, Ridge Holland runs into Sean Spears in the parking lot. Ridge Holland is looking to forward to stacking up victories. And it, it looks like we're going to get a, I don't know, a partnership here between Holland and Spears. Uh, we then... Got what did we get after this? I can't remember. We got something to do with you. Uh, we got you know what? I think it was um it was like a what do they call that group? The Final Testament. Yes, I fucking hate this group, man. They absolutely suck. I mean, what would you rather? Seriously, two big fat guys offers a pain. Two fucking jobbers being led by another jobber and carrying cross and an old guy from the nineties or. Would you rather Scarlet Bordeaux just fucking strip down to her underwear? I know what I would prefer. Now, maybe there's some people that like these big, sweaty, I don't know what they are, um, Albanian two tag teamers or whatever, but fuck that, man. Just give us Scarlet Bordeaux. Give us a smoke show. I mean, we'll see what Charlotte can do. What I don't get is Charlotte was fucking fantastic in TNA. Like, legitimately, she was great. Her character was great. But they just haven't went with it in WWE. They've completely ruined her just to try and, I don't know, put over Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross is a bum. You know, he's like, this is like Mark Merrow and Sable. Scarlet has got the potential to be the star. And Karrion Cross is just a nobody. But I don't think Scarlet will ever come to anything in WWE. I think they've waited too long. I think they've wasted her. She's getting older and older by the day. I know it's not the same company anymore, I know it's not the same, they're not looking for the same sort of uh, shit that they were with Sable, but still, I, I do think there was big potential in Scarlet Bordeaux. We see Trick Williams talking to Johnny Gargano, Gargano tells Trick Williams to whoop that trick tonight when he takes on Eli Dragunov. Uh, we get Baron Corbin versus Lexus King, we also got Damien Priest. Wishing Eli Dragunov luck tonight. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Lexi King defeated Corbin with a low blow. So it is what it is. Um, I don't know what's happening here, but we'll see. Uh, then we got... What did we get next? I think it was just a lineup for spring break in week two. Then it was the sixth, the sixth match, the world title match, NXT championship match. If Trick Williams loses, he'll leave NXT. Well, Trick Williams isn't going anywhere because he won. Decent match, we've got the standoff at the end, both guys in the corner, both guys running to try and hit their finishing manoeuvres. Trick Williams managed to hit his first, he got the trick shot, and that was it. He won after the match, Dragunov gave the title to Williams, and Dragunov gave Williams a big hug, and that was it. Williams celebrated in the crowd as the new NXT champion, the show went off the air. Are they te Did they tease a potential Dragunov, Damian Priest feud for the world title earlier? Let's fucking hope not. I mean, as bad as I think Damien Priest versus G. Uso is, holy crap, Damien Priest versus Eli Dragunov is a massive downgrade on that. Anyway, look, the women's title match I thought was good. I would have had Tate and Paxley win, but it is what it is. Main event was alright. I'm really glad that Trick Williams won. So, uh, there's a couple of positives from this show straight away. Uh, other than that, oh, we did have, I totally forgot, we had Blair Davenport versus Sol Ruka in a beach brawl. Um, so Rook has got a really cool finisher, you know, fair play to her. I'm going to give this NXT a 4 out of 10. I, I didn't think it was that bad, guys. I thought it was, it was like average, you know, it was not great, not horrible, just somewhere in between. Yeah, 4 out of 10, that's what I'm giving it. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.